This video was sponsored by NordVPN. More about them a little further in. I spent the last three days trying out Melee, Range, and Magic after the massive combat changes, so now it's time for my review. To start things off, let's take a look at Melee. Melee had by far the most to gain in these combat changes, as all of these 30k hits you're currently looking at would have literally been half that amount of damage before the update, as the old hit cap was 15,000. But it goes so far beyond that as along with the raised hit caps, the Lang Swords had their special attack completely reworked, and this new special attack absolutely slaps. It carries a 15 second cooldown, and if you use it with enough primordial ice stacks, it will literally deal 50,000 damage at no adrenaline cost. So on paper, melee looks pretty good, but let's get into some actual bosses. At Masuda in Elite Dungeon 1, I was able to do a ridiculous amount of damage from my initial Berserk rotation, and this resulted in a personal record that even beat out my Necromancy record by a few seconds. Masuda is still an absolutely terrible boss, but this was a lot of fun and it went very well. At Seryu, I absolutely cruised to an easy one cycle, which was possible before the combat changes, but this made it a million times easier and more consistent. No crazy timing required, and I'd be able to do this every single time. Heading into Elite Dungeon 3, the most notable thing I was able to do is an Ambassador Beam Skip, where I was able to drop 100,000 damage on his head, resulting in him skipping the entire beam mechanic. This was done with a stalled overpower into a Dragon Claw special into a Lang Sword special, and that's all it took to do that full 100,000 damage and skip the mechanic. Now, in my excitement, I may have smoked the entire attackable standable area, so I did have to teleport out, but still, a beam skip is a beam skip, and that was clean. At hard mode care pack, I was able to wipe a full phase in a single berserk rotation. It is worth noting that if I hadn't been on a slayer task, I would have fallen a little bit short on damage, but usually if you're doing hard mode care pack, you want to be on a slayer task. And if you're on one, the damage you're going to deal is absolutely solid. But what if you're looking for a more fun way to delete phase seven of Zamrock? Melee might be exactly what you're looking for, as all it took was a blood assault and then claw spam the rest of the way to completely nuke the boss. But next up, let's head to the Blackstone Dragon and attempt a flight skip. This is the speed kill where if you deal enough damage, you can completely skip the entire 45 second long flying phase. And just like that, it was handled. And that's also without the Dragon Slayer perk on my gear, which means I'm leaving 7% damage on the table and it doesn't even matter. So overall, on the positive side, melee has a whole lot more power than it used to. But not everything related to melee is perfect. At High Rain Rage Zamrock and at Solo Solak, the high damage you take while in Berserk does not play very nicely into melee camping with those bosses. It wasn't the worst thing, but in my personal experience, if you're someone that has access to other styles, the other styles might be a little bit easier to use. One other possible negative that I need to mention is that because splashing is no longer a thing, dealing a lot of damage in RuneScape is now pretty reliant on critical strike buffs, and melee is no exception to that. In a lot of my melee rotations, I was actually putting on a wand and an orb to get in sight fear stacks so that I could cast Tsunami. And in addition to that, after using Meteor Strike, which is melee's critical strike buff, the best way to get your adrenaline back after casting it is to put on a crossbow and cast Greater Ricochet. This gives you a lot more adrenaline that you can spend on high-powered abilities and special attacks. These critical strike buffs are almost universally worth being in with all of the three core combat styles in RuneScape, and although they're not required, they do help out a lot. As an overall assessment, melee is absolutely back, and it's more fun to use than ever before. I'm honestly thinking of becoming a melee main after this showcase, and there is nothing I want to do in RuneScape more than busting out the melee gear and dealing some damage. This video was made possible by NordVPN. A virtual private network or VPN takes your data and it puts it in an encrypted tunnel. Not only does this make it harder for your internet service provider to see what you're doing, but it also makes it infinitely more difficult for any sort of bad actor to access what you're doing online. And beyond that, for that extra layer of security, NordVPN themselves care about your privacy, and they don't track or share what you do online. But Nord is more than just a VPN. They also offer this multifaceted threat protection dashboard which has customizable options to shield you from malware, trackers, and most importantly for a lot of us, ads, which we can all agree are getting a little bit out of hand. If you're looking for protection off the internet, you can also check out their built-in file protection that will protect your device from malicious downloads and check for vulnerable apps that may be already on your computer. If anything I just talked about sounds interesting to you, you can go to nordvpn.com forward slash rsguy to save 65% off a two-year standard plan. This comes out to under four bucks a month, and they also throw in an extra four months free. 
But that's not all. If you try it out and you don't love it, you can get your money back, no questions asked, in the first 30 days. So there's no risk in trying it out. Once again, thank you very much to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. And with that said, let's get back into it. Now, let's look at the ranged combat style. Despite the nerfs to the bow of the Last Guardian and the Dark Bow special attack, range is absolutely busted, and that's pretty much the only way I can put it. Check it out. Draculich Armor, which as a side note I definitely should have made a testing video on, offers an extremely powerful buff that almost guarantees critical strikes for your next three abilities after channeling a full rapid fire. And this combined with the raised hit cap allows you to deal an absolutely obscene amount of damage. This works especially well with special attack weapons like the Saren Godbow and the Dark Bow, and it's absolutely electric. Just as an example, in this last 40 seconds talking about how powerful range is, I was able to do 600,000 damage to Raksha, which means I instantly phased him from full life points while skipping every single mechanic all the way to phase 4. This damage output is absolutely wild. But wait, there's more. Jazz Dragonbane arrows also give you an additional 30% damage against dragons, and although Vorkath isn't technically a dragon, they do happen to work there, and they work insanely well. If you've ever had aspirations of dealing 100,000 damage in a single rapid fire, Vorkath is the place to do it, as the Salve Amulet and Jazz Dragonbane arrows stack and give you truly inhuman damage capabilities. At hard mode Vorkath, I was actually able to skip every single mechanic of the boss fight up to the flight phase, which means that in about 60 seconds, I popped off over 900,000 damage. And this setup isn't just good at Vorkath. It kind of goes without saying, but it will also work extremely well at a boss like the Blackstone Dragon, where I was able to cruise to the easiest flight skip of my life. And when you're looking at other bosses in Elite Dungeon 2, like Varak Lith, I was able to wipe him out in seconds. Everything just hits so hard with this setup, and the fun per hour on this is off the charts. But what about a harder boss, like 500% enraged Zamorak? Unfortunately for Zamorak, phase 7 melted like it was nothing. I wouldn't even call this a one cycle, I'd call it like a half cycle. All it took was four abilities to wipe the entire phase, and I didn't even bother with storm shards and shatter. I channeled a rapid fire, I used my Saren Godbow special, then I spammed my dark bow the rest of the way. After Zamorak, I tried out solo Elite Dungeon 1, and I cruised to a very easy one cycle at Seryu. And then I decided to finish things off with a bit of solo Solak, where I absolutely bodied the first phase, dealing 500,000 damage before realizing that my grimoire had been off the entire time. So yeah, like I said, ranged is absolutely busted. It's worth noting though, that this level of damage isn't free, and ranging at this level of proficiency is in my opinion more difficult than any of the other three styles, as you have to constantly swap amulets, special attacks, and ammunition to get the most damage output. Ranging is not for the faint of heart or the fearful of switches, but it's absolutely worth the extra inputs for this kind of damage. Let's talk about magic. Before we begin field testing, I want to mention that magic gained the least out of all these combat changes, especially considering a lot of the damage output you get with magic comes from amassing a ton of smaller critical strikes, as opposed to large ones that were previously running up against the hit cap. That being said, this raised hit cap did lead to some interesting new special attacks, and as an example, the Iben Staff is an absolute blast to use, as when you use Iben Blast, you can actually hit 30,000 damage, which is very satisfying. As a side note, this isn't actually, quote, worth using, because the Armadal Battle Staff outclasses it in almost every scenario, but I did want to mention that I had an absolute ton of fun using it, and I don't see anything wrong with putting in an Iben Staff for fun, knowing that you're doing a little bit less damage, but you're getting to see those massive 30k hits. First off, let's head to 2000% Enrage Zamorak, where magic performed very well. The increase in damage is noticeable, especially on the later pads when you're getting bonus adrenaline. There were points like what you're watching right now where I was able to spam Greater Concentrated Blast into an Armadal Battle Staff special attack over and over and over again as my entire rotation, which was one, extremely funny, but two, also outputted a ridiculous amount of damage, and this absolutely slapped. At harder bosses like High Enrage Zamorak, although magic may not get you the fastest kills, it offers a perfect blend of damage output and damage mitigation with things like Crypt Lube that you can put on to make the boss fight significantly easier. So in my opinion, magic is still a very good option for these kinds of boss fights for a lot of players, including myself. If I were picking a combat style to push my Zamorak in rage right now, I would be using magic. At Raksha, you can really tell that magic is consistent, but it does lack the immense power of range, where with ranged, I was able to do 600,000 damage in a single ultimate rotation. 
When I went in with magic, instead of 600,000 damage, it was looking a lot closer to 400,000 damage. This is still more than enough damage for almost every skip or almost every DPS check in the game, but I did want to note it does not compare favorably to ranged in terms of damage output. At Elite Dungeon 1, I was able to one-cycle Seryu, although I did want to mention the rotation was pretty weird, as I had to stagger my Sunshine and my Fractured Staff of Armadal specials in order to have enough damage to take out the final crystal. Unlike with the other styles where you can just stack all of the damage all at once, magic once you're out of a Sunshine is very, very weak, and because of that, I had to stagger things in order to get it done. That said, at Elite Dungeon 2, I absolutely cruised to a Blackstone Dragon flight skip in the same manner as I'd done with ranged and melee. And last but not least, I went to Solo Solak and found Magic to perform extremely well and extremely consistently here. So overall for me, Magic isn't nearly as flashy as those 30k after 30k hits with melee, or those massive Saren Godbow specials and Darkbow specs that you get with range, but Magic does a lot of things very well, and it's very consistent. I'd consider it a really good jack-of-all-trades but master-of-none option. But now, let's get into my final verdict. If I were to rank every single style on a few different categories, it would look as follows. For how easy each style is to use, Necromancy is absolutely in the top spot, and I'd follow that up with melee, magic, and then ranged. But what about in terms of overall power level? From that perspective, range gets the top spot, and then after that, I've actually got a three-way tie with melee, magic, and necromancy all a tier below that. But last but not least, and by far most importantly, what about the styles I found the most fun to use? And from that perspective, melee is absolutely taking the top spot, followed by ranged and necromancy tied, and with magic and last. So there you have it. Those are my initial thoughts on the current state of combat in RuneScape after all these massive combat changes. And overall, I'm very pleased with the changes. It feels like, unlike before where most people had to use necromancy everywhere or deal significantly less damage, it feels like there are lots of good options here and every single style is now viable for most PVM. With that said, I want to know what you guys think. How did you guys find these new combat changes and are you going to be picking up a non-necromancy style?